If you want to learn everything you need to know as a nurse about alpha blockers, then this is the video for you. Alpha blockers are also known as alpha adrenergic blocking agents or alpha adrenergic antagonists. Most alpha blockers end in osin, for example, tamsulosin and prazosin. However, phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine do not, but they are rarely used or seen in practice. Alpha blockers are predominantly used for benign prostate hyperplasia and as an adjuvant to other medications for hypertension. They are rarely used for hypertension on their own. Some less common uses for alpha blockers you may see include pheochromocytoma, a catecholamine secreting tumor, Raynaud's disease, frostbite, and a hypertensive crisis. Alpha blockers work by competing with catecholamines for alpha receptor sites. Catecholamines are normally released by sympathetic nerve endings and bind to alpha receptors. When alpha blockers block catecholamines from binding to alpha receptors, they block the sympathetic nervous response. In other words, alpha blockers block the fight or flight response, resulting in the parasympathetic rest and digest response to be dominant. There are two main types of alpha receptors, alpha-1A and alpha-1B. Alpha-1A receptors are predominantly found in the prostate and bladder. Alpha-1B receptors are mainly found in blood vessels. This is easy to memorize if you remember the A and 1A as assistance avoiding and the B and 1B as blood vessels. Alpha blockers cause the smooth muscles of the bladder, neck, and prostate to relax resulting in improved voiding, whereas alpha blockers have a powerful vasodilating effect on blood vessels. They cause both arteries and veins to dilate, resulting in blood pressure reduction. These are both desired and therapeutic effects of alpha blockers. Some alpha blockers block alpha-1A receptors predominantly, such as tamsulosin. These are called selective 1A alpha blockers. Other alpha blockers block alpha-1B receptors predominantly, such as prazosin. These are called selective 1B alpha blockers. Furthermore, some alpha blockers block alpha-1A and alpha-1B receptors equally, such as phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. These are called non-selective alpha blockers. Non-selective alpha blockers are rarely used or seen in practice. Lastly, some special nursing considerations, which only apply to alpha-1B blockers because of their powerful vasodilating effects. We do want to change position slowly due to the risk of postural hypotension. We do want to give alpha-1B blockers at bedtime, as this will decrease the risk of postural hypotension. Additionally, we do want to titrate the medication to the desired dose as the first dose can cause an increased risk of postural hypotension. We also want to monitor for reflex tachycardia. This occurs as the body's natural protective response to the decrease in blood pressure. And finally, we want to monitor for dizziness and headaches. This wraps up everything you need to know, as a nurse, about alpha blockers. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please show your support by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And please leave a comment down below if you have any video requests. Thank you, and bye!